So today I wanted to talk about some of the things that have been on the news lately. Not that I've watched the news, but because I stay aware through social media, news filters through and uh, I end up receiving the information of things that are happening uh, within our culture. And one of the big ones was Mars rover landing. And I gotta tell you, that was exciting. I was so thrilled to watch that um, through NASA TV on the internet, and 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 I'll tell you some of the things that, that just like gave me gave me chills thinking about it right now. The excitement afterwards, and the press conference afterwards. We are such a culture of of you know getting ahead and things that to see people at the top of their field so incredibly enthusiastic, so passionate, so excited about their work, about their, I mean, I would, I would guess that no amount of money could buy the kind of joy that you saw in those scientists and those workers' eyes as they were, you know, seeing the, the product of all of their passion and energy and reflecting on the potential um, meaning and, and uh, you know, ripples that, that this kind of thing can, can happen or can cause and, and just uh, I find that anytime someone is sharing something of passion to me even if I don't even understand what it is that energy is I mean that's that's the divine speaking through someone you know follow your bliss follow your joy these are the ways that we get our compass to know what we should be putting our energy into and, and to see this room full of people you know erupting and hugging each other and then the joking and just the, I mean just the kind of the nervous happiness as they were you know trying to, sh to explain things that were happening it was like yes these people are in their joy now that doesn't mean that it's these are steps towards anything that I could ever understand the the outcome or, or how it's going to improve the world or any of those things those are those are not the destinations of our paths are not what we concern ourselves with what we concern ourselves with is getting present having integrity aligning with love following our bliss and then let the map take care of itself follow the step of right follow the step of love follow the step that is heart song is calling us to and let go of where it brings you for those guys it brought them to this peak moment of landing on another planet. I saw something today that said, "How's that for a you know a switcheroo? The first you know alien landing happens to be us landing on Mars." So, okay. So what I want to talk today about was not so much about how awesome that was, but some of the reactions that I've heard since then from a lot of people that surprised me. I've heard a number of people say that, like, hey, could we stop spending so much on space exploration? Like, how can you, how can we justify these incredible expenses while there are people without clean water or while there are people starving? You know, can we, you know, I want my share of the, of, of the mission back. And, you know, uh, and first of all, the stats that I saw said something like that that mission cost every person in the US seven dollars it's easy to be critical of how our government spends money but that to me that's some of the best spent money I've ever I've ever spent space exploration is critical for a few reasons. First off, it gives us obstacles way beyond anything we've had before. So it forces us to get out of the mindset. What did, what did uh, Einstein say? That you cannot solve, or maybe it was Buckminster Fuller, you cannot solve the current problem with the thinking that caused it? Well, what better way to get out of the current thinking than to challenge ourselves to overcome obstacles that are not even of this world? The technologies of the space program ripple down and, and affect society in many ways. It's not just this, you know, vanity thing. But even as a vanity thing or a symbolic thing, it is so important. 
I wonder if the people saying that, oh, we shouldn't be spending that, would say the same thing if we lived in a world that had not reached the moon. How much impact has been on our sense of selves, our sense of, our, of the world, our sense of who we are in the world and what our culture is, from that knowledge that we can go out to space, that we are not bound by our atmosphere. That mental shift is huge. And I would argue that the whole process of exploring space is a critical piece of shifting our collective consciousness. We cannot fix the problems of our culture with the way we thought to get into them. The only way, I believe, to heal the world, not that I even think that that's the objective, but if you are you know, get focused on how are we going to solve the, the problems of the world, I don't think it's from you know, addressing the individual problems. Yes, we need to do that, but a certain percentage of us have to be putting energy into total shift, a total awakening that, that changes the way individuals think, which then ripples and changes the way a culture thinks, which changes the way a world thinks. There was a image from Voyager 1, um, the famous pale blue dot photo, that Carl Sagan did this incredibly beautiful uh, talk about. And basically, as Voyager 1 was leaving our solar system, he had to turn around and take a picture back towards Earth. And it was just, it's just black. And there's this little pale blue dot. And you can look it up on YouTube to, to hear him say the speech, but he basically says, look, you know, everything we've ever known, every tyrant, every war, every violence, every, every righteous act has happened on that little dot. Everything we've ever known has happened on that little dot. And it gives us perspective to wars. It gives perspective to destroying the planet. I've heard some people argue that that very picture did more for the environmental movement. And same with the picture from, from the Earth, from, from the moon. You know, that those pictures shifted people's perspective of who they are in the world, of what the world is, in relative to everything and how much responsibility we have for our little pale blue dot. I think that space exploration is that critical piece, that, that, that it, without it, we're living in a house with the doors locked and the windows closed, and it's, it's a little claustrophobic and it gets a little suicidal and we start thrashing the place. When the windows and doors are open, there's this kind of, we're part of a neighborhood, we're part of a world, we're part of a universe. And there, there's something I think that switches where we, when we start to feel a little embarrassed that we could do so much horrible things to such a beautiful, fertile piece of the whole. That we could do so many horrible things to one another when we are comrades on this little spaceship, this little piece of space dust that gets caught in, the, uh, in a, the rays of a, of a tiny star. Please watch the blue dot, uh, the audio that, that Carl Sagan does. It's, it's beautiful and it's epic. So I've heard a lot of people making these comparisons about um, you know, for what could we do with the money from the space program. And the truth is it's, it's half a percent of the national budget. And that's a lot of money. And yeah, we could, we, could, we could do a lot of good stuff with that money. I would argue this is good stuff. And I think that, that being critical of how our government spends money is important. But I don't think it should start with a space program. I think it should start with defense. It should start with interest that we're paying. It should start in many, in, in, in a, as a global look at how we spend money, not at looking at a specific thing and saying, that's frivolous. What could we do with that chunk of money? I think that any time you get too focused on whatever the most dire need in that moment is, you've lost or you're out of the, out of the, faith, of the, the flow. It is easy, and I see people all the time to get in that place of like, how can you do that while people are starving? It's like, well, there's always been people starving. There's always been people suffering. Are you to say that we should never dance? We should never read fiction? We should never have fun. We should never create art. Clearly, if you only focus on what is productive to, to bringing the most the suffering people of the world out of suffering, then there is no time ever to experience consciousness as the gift was intended, I believe. 
when Jesus was having oil put on his feet by Mary, uh, now I'm blanking on, uh, Judas, you know, was like, dude, we could give, we could buy stuff for the poor with that money that you're spending on all that oil. What the fuck? And Jesus is like, uh, hey, there's always going to be poor and there's always going to be suffering and there's always going to be evil men. It is important to take a moment every once in a while to rub oil on your feet. It is important to make art. And it is important to explore the universe. That gesture of science, of our exploration of the, our universe, extending out to Mars, opens the window, opens the door. It opens up the definition of who we are, because as we are the remnants of exploded stars, we are connected to everything, and as we explore that, we understand ourselves, and hopefully some little things start cracking open in our heads, and we see the connection to it all. These are the magical things that I think are possible. You have to get out of the cause and effect of the now and, and surrender into the, the, the potential of miracles. I really think that that is the only way. One foot in the reality. You got crap on your shoe. Yes, you deal with it every once in a while. And every once in a while, man, go for the greatest cone imaginable. Even if it means you got to deal with a little extra shit in your shoe. So, with that being said, I'm here to announce that I will be going to Mars. Okay, not really. But I feel like a piece of me is there. So, thank you for... Um, uh, contributing your share of your tax dollars towards the space program and encouraging your elected officials to, to, to realize the importance of that to us. <sighs> but since we are on this planet, most of us who are listening right now in all different places, if you're in the chat room and you want to share where you are uh, physically in this moment, that would be awesome. We can get a little, little map, mind map of where we are. But it hardly matters where your feet are at. It matters where you're mind and your heart is at. And in this moment, we share the vibration of Hugnation. We share the vibration of love, connection, recalibration, hope. Maybe not hope. Depends on how you define hope, I guess. But thank you for being a part of it. We've got Jet Burns is having lunch at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, our representative from the inside. Woo, thank you. Poway, California, Lakeland, Florida. We got Italy, Arizona, New Mexico. Yeah. San Diego. All over this amazing planet. So on behalf of the planet, Hug Nation sends a kudos to all those listening on Mars and other planets. And a thank you and an acknowledgement that as we recognize the divine in one another. We also recognize the divine in all. So let's take a moment and have Hug Nation. Grab yourselves by the shoulders. Mmm. We are bound by the skin sack of this meat body. But we are of the universe. We take a moment to be appreciative of all we experience from this perspective, from this single, stunted, experience of time and space of but what an amazing gift it is what a treasure chest of experiences ah oh, what a gift and as we squeeze ourselves we imagine we are squeezing not our bodies but all of our brothers and sisters on the planet all of them in their own place on their path caught up in their own journey caught up in their own obstacles sometimes forgetting that at their heart they are pure, they are divine. We forgive them for getting caught up in it and forgive ourselves. For just a few moments, let's sink into that place where we are all cells of one giant organism. We are all rays of light from a single source. We are all perfect. 
We're all divine. We are all richly blessed to be able to experience this amazing universe. Let's take three breaths together. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb, all the love warriors and all the explorers, happy Hug Nation. Thank you for shining your light, for walking your walk, for exploring your joy and spreading it. It is a gift. It is an honor. I love you. Namaste.